I always said good morning, everybody, but actually just good morning, John, and good evening for a lot of us. And I, it depends on where you live, what time of day it is. But for me, it's nighttime, as you can see out the windows. And um, tonight's a little different because I'm at home. And I'm really hoping that my internet is good enough to do this. So we have Starlink now and it's usually pretty good. So I'm really hoping that this will work because I just couldn't get to work today. Um, and all my dogs and cats are kind of going crazy behind me. So um, maybe you'll get a glimpse of them. But anyway, welcome to the Q&A and I hope everyone is doing well. If you could let me know if you can hear me, that would be great. And see me, that would be great. Hi, Linda. Hi, Deborah. I said good morning to John. Hi, Missy. Your messages are from a while ago, so I'm not sure if you're still on, but if you are, hi. Hi, Joni. How are you? Hi, Christina. Yes and yes. Yay. Let's hope it continues. You know, oh, here comes one of my kittens. They already knocked stuff off. Like I've got like some lights to the side so you can actually see me. Come here, baby. You want to be seen? Come here. Come here, sweetie. Come here. This is Lady May. Oh, there comes George. Okay. And Gus. No, no, no. We're not playing. We're not playing Chase the Cat. And George, no, we're not, we're not doing that right now. We're not doing that. Okay. Uh-uh. George, don't, don't, nope. Uh-uh. No. Nope. Very good. Okay. We're doing some training. So we had some, a slow introduction um, with them and with the dogs and the cats. And now it's pretty good. Like we can leave them all out as long as we're home. We wouldn't do it if we weren't home because George, he likes to play. And I'm afraid that he's going to play a little too rough with these little kittens. Hi, Terry. How are you? Good. So I'm coming across well. That's wonderful. Good. Well, let's proper. I'm not sure. Doesn't matter. Hi, Kimberly. How are you? Hi, Damon. How are you? Thank you so much. Hi, Linda. Hi, Craig. Oh, and do you hear thumping? You might not hear it. I've got to tell you a funny story because I, I love our Tasty Tuesday or not Taste Tuesday. I love those too, but I love our Q and A chats because I feel like I can really talk to you guys just kind of on a personal level. But the other night, Jeff is working day shift, and um, and I was home alone with the dogs, and I heard this thump, 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 and I could pinpoint it to one part of the house, which is the back corner over there. And that's like where our crawl space is. And I was like, oh, what is that? So I'm thinking, okay, I'm in my pajamas. I think I'm going to need to get dressed and get the animals out of here because that doesn't sound good. Like, what if it, <laughs> I'm silly sometimes. Like, what if it's something really serious and the house is about to blow up? I don't want to be in here, you know, and that happens. <laughs> And then I realized that it was, Jeff had set a watering thing for the greenhouse. And um, so I don't have to, we have two plants. Sorry, I've got something in my eye. We've got two plants down there. And I, I told him I was going to be so busy the next couple of weeks, I was afraid I was going to forget. And they're a lime tree and a lemon tree. And so he set up an automatic waterer. And the way that the plumbers has have hooked all this up is it does this big thump, thump, thump every time the timer goes to water out there. So anyway, I just thought it was so funny. I told, told Jeff, I said I was about to leave, but um, I, I had to get dressed first. And then by the time I was thinking about that, I figured out what it was. So anyway, so funny. <laughs> um, it's, it's funny around here because I live like way in the middle of nowhere. And so when Jeff and I are home, nothing ever happens, right? When we're home together, nothing, nobody comes to the door, nothing ever happens. But when I'm here by myself, weird stuff happens like late at night, like sometimes he's working nights. And so like nine 30, 10 o'clock at night, somebody will be knocking on the door. I'm like, Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? And you know, my heart's going like this and I'm like texting Jeff. I'm like, Oh my gosh, what do I do? Um, obviously don't answer the door. It's usually like UPS. Well, I don't know why they're working that late, but you know, it, it's, it's a little freaky back here. Let me tell you. Um, 
Okay. I know I didn't. Um, I, I'm trying to get back up to where I left off. Hi, Leslie. Hey, Deb. Deb, I'm calling you Deb now. Debbie, you probably don't even like being called Deb. So I don't know why I did that. But anyway, hey, Debbie. Hey, Tamara, how are you? Um, Deborah says that her Starlink is intermittent. Mine is pretty good. We have little bits of, you know, outages here and there, but they're really short lived. Um, so mine's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, thank you, Claudia. I appreciate that. Hi, Faith. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Missy. Hi, George. My dog is named George too. So if I'm saying, if I'm chastising somebody tonight, it's not you, George Kemp. It's my dog. <laughs> uh, Cause sometimes he needs to be a little bit um, like, like right now he's at the pool table, like staring at my cat. Oh my gosh. He needs, he, he's the one that I worry about and he wouldn't hurt the cats on purpose, but he might, you know, yeah, Debbie, a ghost. I didn't know what it was. I mean, it was freaky. Oh, and I've got another thing. I've been telling Jeff when I'm at the when I'm at the workhouse in Corinth and and I stay there sometimes overnight, I told Jeff, I said, Jeff, there's something in this house. Like something is living in this house. And it's bigger than a mouse. Um, because I can hear it when it's real quiet at night. I can hear it. And, I, and he's like, I don't think so. And we've been looking for any kind of signs, you know, any kind of poop, because that's the easiest way to find out if you get something in your house, right? That shouldn't be there. Is look for the look for the remnants. Nothing, nowhere, nowhere. But guess what? I left a cinnamon raisin muffin out on the counter. And I'll be darn. I went back there. <laughs> And there was a hole drilled down in it. I texted to Jeff. I said, Jeff, were you picking at the streusel topping on those cinnamon muffins? And he said, no. And I said, well, we definitely have something in here. Like, definitely. So, ah, oh, like, I don't like that either. Anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about you guys. Um, tell me what's going on with you. Thank you, Jen, right? Alaska Family Kitchen. Jen, did I get that right? You always tell me your name. And I said, you don't have to anymore because I'm going to remember it. So if I didn't, you can smack my hand. I hope so. I hope so. I hope I got it right. Hi, Leanne. How are you? Hi, Shelly. Um, Shelly, I don't know if my dogs are, Shelly's saying, um, I'd be scared, but good thing you have the dogs there. I, you know, I don't know if they would do anything to protect me. I'm not sure. They're so sweet, right? I'm not really sure. I mean, Gus acts like a big dog, but I don't know what they would do anyway. Uh, well, it is what it is. Hi, Harry from England. How are you? And Sylvia from Ontario. Oh, Debbie, I would hope not another snake. I thought about that, but I don't think snakes like get up on counters to eat muffins. That seems like a rodent to me, but... I mean, okay, I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute. I'm going to mute if I know how. How do I mute? How do I mute? Wait a minute. Did I mute? Shh. 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 I hope I'm muted. Be quiet. Okay. Was I, I hope I muted myself. Anyway, um, a kitchen ghost, Leanna's a kitchen ghost. Yeah, I, I, well, I know I have, I have something going on in my house, in my workhouse because things are never where I put them, you know, like I go to look for some kind of a, a tool or something that I need for a recipe. I can never find anything. Jeff, do you know where you might've put, or well, no, not where you might've put this. Do you know where this might be? No, I haven't seen it. <laughs> Always the answer. Never seen it. Sometimes it's me, though, that I did it the wrong way. Oh, that's funny. So James says AD ADT is the answer. Yeah, except for the fact that that doesn't even exist here. We don't even have telephone lines. <laughs> like, you can't even get a landline. You can't even get a telephone, right? It's crazy. And there's no cell phone service. And... um. I, I mean, it would, I guess my internet, I can hook it up to the internet. It, 
it's working pretty well, but they could easily cut that cord. Yeah, right. Anyway, we're not going to talk about that, but um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be home alone tonight. So <laughs> that's good. Hi, m &T, living and cooking. Juliet, we had a big trap set from a while ago because I did see some remnants of some kind of a, uh, some kind of an animal bigger than a mouse. And we never caught anything and it, and they all went away, like never have seen them again. So I just thought maybe, oh, Jeff's telling me that, that they are not barking at him yet. He's on his way home. Um, anyway, I don't know what it is. I, I really don't know. Um, okay. I didn't mute. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. Partially muted. I don't know. I'm going to have to learn how to mute on this computer. I would think, I would think I would just turn my sound off, right? Oh no. I have to go into the settings here. I think. No, no, it doesn't. Hmm. Well, I'll have to work that out. So hopefully it'll, hopefully they don't start, um, barking again. Okay. Let's move on. Do we have any cooking questions? Hi, Mary. How are you? So Mary's got a second batch of yogurt hanging. Yeah. Isn't that funny with the things that we do? Like who would ever think that you'd be hanging yogurt, but if you want it really nice and thick, um, hang it, hang it. So it strains. And I love the flour sacks to do that in. Um, you know, I learned something the other day and now I can't share it with you because I've already forgotten what the name of it is. Darn it. Somebody asked me how to make something and I Googled it because <laughs> I have to do that if I don't know what it is, right? I Googled it and found out it is, they, they call it cheese, but it's not really, really cheese in my opinion, but um, you strain yogurt like for a day or so, like really thick. So even if you bought Greek yogurt, you would still have to strain it until it was spreadable and really thick. Well, that's how I eat my yogurt all the time. I strain it for a really long time. And um, it's called something else. It's 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 considered a cheese. And I, I cannot remember what the name of that is. I'll have to go back and look in my on my website on the comment and find out. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, Okay. So we have a question. That's good. That's what we're here for. All right, Lisa, I have a question about my Ninja Foodie. I make your rice a at least once a week. And sometimes when I try to steam it, it won't steam. It just seems to not do anything. Have any, any ideas? So Lisa, is it like ever boiling the water or... <laughs> Hang on, hang on. Okay. I don't know if I was able to mute you at all or lessen that nonsense. But anyway, I... um. I let them out because Jeff's home. So I let them out the garage door. Okay. Um, all right. So yeah. Is it, is it heating? And do you have the one lid or the two lid? Um, I don't really know why sometimes it would work and sometimes it wouldn't work. I mean, I can see there being variables about sometimes it, it steams the rice perfectly and sometimes it doesn't because that could be temperature of water. That could be, you know, I, I don't know, a ton of different things, really. Um, even brands of rice, types of rice, you know, they all cook a little different. But as far as just if everything else is pretty much the same and this is just you not, you know, it not steaming, I, I really don't know. Um, so let me know if it heats up all the time and just isn't, does it cook? Because sometimes I notice steam comes out more than other times, even if I'm cooking the same thing. So if it's cooking and you're just not seeing the steam, but the end result's good, I wouldn't worry about it, obviously. Um, but if it's something else, give me a few more details. But I, I honestly don't know if I'm going to be able to help you. That's probably a ninja question. 
Um, that's a good idea, Jen. Set up a camera in the kitchen while we're out. That's a good idea. See if we can find who's um, who's poking in my muffins, right? Um, okay. So Jeff's got a question. How can I make seven chicken breasts at the same time in the OL701? Well, it depends on what function you want to use, because if you wanted to pressure cook them, which is not necessarily my favorite way to do chicken breast, unless they're going to be in broth or in some sort of a liquid. Um, but if you're, if you're going to do seven pressure cooking, there's really no problem. You can put them all in the inner pot. If you're trying to air fry, that's when we get into a little bit of, you know, space uh, constraints, right? So the only thing I can think of to tell you that would work is if you have, first of all, you, the 700 is the eight quart. So you should have a rack that's a double rack. And what I would do is I would arrange the chicken breast. So you have um, three or, or four on the bottom if they'll fit. If they won't, you would almost have to do like I don't even know. I don't even know if you could do them if they won't fit on the two levels of the rack. Because if you put them all the way down at the bottom, they're probably not going to get done. And I'm assuming you want them all to be done, you know, at the same time. Okay, stop, please. You guys got to go outside until you calm down. Yes, until you calm down. George, 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 out, out, out. I'm sorry. How obnoxious. You're probably like, don't ever do this again at home. It's ridiculous. It's what I live with. Um, I love them though. <laughs> anyway, um, so if you can get them, because it depends on what size they are, but I mean, the size of chicken breasts these days, they're huge. So it's going to be tricky. But if you can get them where you can layer them all, do a double layer, cook them halfway, then you're going to have to alternate the layers. The other option is to kind of cook them in batches and then put them all back in. So like cooking them to 75% done. And then just before you're ready to eat, put them all back in and it's okay if they're kind of on top of each other and just blast the heat to finish cooking them all at once. So that's another option that you could try. All right. Um, oh, Crystal, well, have a good vacation. Thanks for joining in while you're on vacation. That's awesome. Um, oh, that's funny, John. Barry's the same, knows where it is when he wants it, but not when he needs to put it away. That's right. That's right. Oh, gosh. It's funny. No, land. I've got a cell phone, but it hardly works. My mom yells at me all the time um, because I try to call her and I have to stand outside to get a cell phone signal. And um, I keep her on speaker so I can keep the phone directed towards the tower. And she's always like, because she's 80. Well, she, I think she, oh, gosh, I don't even know. I think she, I'll have to ask Jeff how old my mother is. That's really bad, isn't it? She's like, she just had a birthday yesterday, 84. Ooh. If I, if I just guessed her age older, I'm going to hear about it. But anyway, um, so she, she yells at me all the time. I can't hear you, Louise. I can't hear you. I'm like, oh, I'm doing the best I can, you know? So I try to call her now when I'm on my way to work because that way I've got, I have better internet. Um, oh, that's so awesome, Patricia. Thank you so much. Um, so Patricia has just uh, kind of settled down after moving across Texas and she is listening to the Salt and Pepper Academy. That's so awesome. I still have more videos to do. It's still not done. I'm so mad at myself, but I have to be in the zone there and I have not been in the zone, I'll tell you. Um, and I need to be in the zone and, and it need to, I need to be focused on it and um, we need to finish it up. Jeff and I keep saying we've got to set that time and finish that up. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> George, we'll say hi to George. Um, all right. Let's see. Have you got a favorite? Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm not sure what that's in reference to Harry, if you could clarify. So see, you guys are, you guys do messages like quickly, but I take so long to talk. 
<laughs> I talk too much, um, that I don't get down there. Like it is 717 and I'm on messages that came in at 709. And so my brain doesn't remember what we were talking about at 709. Um, so I, yeah, I don't know what, what favorite I'm, I might, I might not. All right. Yes, I did. I did answer that. I did answer that one. Okay. Um, Oh, now, sous vide, you could sous vide seven chicken breast at one time. Um, I just thought of that with when Mary brought this up. You could definitely do that. There's a couple ways to do it. The easiest way is to individually package them and then just make sure that they're not, um, I mean, they'll, they'll just float around. So you don't have to worry about like them being on top of each other. But if you put more than one in a bag, I like to keep some separation between them so that there's... Um, the water is able to heat all areas of that chicken because if you stack them like in one big bag or something, then you're not going to have even cooking. I mean, that's the same in sous vide as it would be in the oven, as it would be in the pressure cooker, as it would be anywhere. Um, so if Mary, if you don't have sous vide, it's really hard to sous vide without a sous vide machine. It really is hard. Um I mean, technically, you can do it if you want to sit there either with the foodie on sear saute and, you know, you want to monitor the temperature of the water and turn the heat up, add ice. I mean, you want to keep it within, you know, a, a certain level for it to work right, certain temperature level, like five degrees. It would be a pain. It's not so bad, I guess, if it's a short cook, but a lot of times sous vide cooks are long. So you'd have to be there. Like for chicken, I think it's 90 minutes. Nobody wants that. So... Um, what I recommend is if you don't have a Ninja Foodie with a sous vide function and you wanted to try it out, look for an inexpensive or on sale um, circulator. Okay. They're just like this little stick. It's a sous vide thing. You can get them relatively inexpensive or look for a really good deal on a second Ninja Foodie because I have seen them um, where they are so low priced that you could probably get a second one for the amount that you would pay for a sous vide machine. Um, and then you can use your inner pot as the pot to sous vide in, but you just put your circulator on. You don't rely on the Ninja Foodie for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, hi, Marlene. Dogs are going to bark. Let them. Oh, it drives me crazy, though. Um, hmm. So Lisa's saying it's still hot. It's the two lid. And then nothing happens after that. When you turn off the sear saute, you put your pressure lid on, you vent your pressure lid, you turn it on uh, steam and you set the, the temp, um, not the temperature, the time and you hit start, then nothing ha ever happens. I mean, that sounds, that sound. I mean, I would say it sounds like the, um, it's not the heating element going up because you are, have already sear sauteed the rice, right? To brown it. So that's not the case. Um, I don't know if it's something in the actual computer that's like not relaying that you just hit steam. I really don't know. I would call Ninja about that. I think that's a tech issue that's above, above what I know. Um, Hey, Wendy, sorry, sorry about the dogs barking. And I'm sure your dog is barking. That's the thing. If you guys have dogs like Wendy does, if if they start barking, your dogs are going to start barking. It's just a whole big uh, mess then. Um, okay, George, don't know if steaming makes a difference, but could it be the water tray on the back of the foodie needing emptied? George, that would not cause any problems with steaming. It will just cause a mess on your counter. And um, if you let it sit in there, it gets really gross, but it wouldn't stop the steaming process. It would just overflow onto your counter. So while it's important to empty them, it's more for hygienic reasons than um, the actual operation of the um, Ninja Foodie. Now, Lisa, that should not be the case. So Lisa's saying, I think it's just kind of still too hot. I don't think so because I go directly from sear saute to steam to pressure cook immediately. And, and, and it's not going to be too hot because the steam function uses that same element and heats it up. Um, so now if it started 
the countdown right away, that could mean that the liquids were too hot and you just might need to increase your steam time a little bit because you didn't have that preheat time. But as far as the actual pot being too hot, I don't see that as, as a, one of the problems that I would think that it would be anyway. Um, all right. Deborah says, on my second foodie, do you have a separate crock pot? Well, first of all, before I got the Ninja Foodie, I wasn't even a crock pot cooker because I didn't like the way food turned out. I thought it boiled things and I just really wasn't happy with it at all. Um, you know, like roast and things. I just didn't like the way they turned out. So I wasn't a crock pot maker. Um, I would go the low and slow in the oven if I wanted pot roast. So I've always used the foodie as a crock pot, which I absolutely love it. It, it. As a slow cooker, it works fantastic. I just love it. And I hear all the time that it people say that they don't like it and it doesn't work. And I think that's about expectations um, because you're used to one way something works. Um, and it has to do with the way heat's transferred and the way that they're designed. Like the, um, the foodie is pretty insulated, right? With a thin ceramic pot, whereas the a slow cooker is much thinner, right? But it's usually got a ceramic crock. Um, and so it's just transferred differently. And so a lot of times with a crock pot or other slow cookers, they will heat a little bit faster, but that doesn't mean that the Ninja Foodie doesn't get there. It does get there. It just takes a little bit longer. Um, and then I find that the timing for me has been exactly the same. So I haven't even had to increase, but I always tell people when you're making something for the first time in the Ninja Foodie slow cooker, you're going to want to allow for another hour or two of time, just in case it takes a little bit longer. Now, I do now have the possible cooker, which I would consider a separate crock pot. I also have a Hamilton Beach crock pot that's been, you know, up on a shelf for four years, five years. The only time I brought it down was when I did the, the experiments for the course between the Ninja Foodie slow cooker and that slow cooker. Um, I don't use it much at all, but the possible cooker, if you can get a good deal on it, that's, that's a pretty nice crock pot, it seems to work great. And it's a basically a crock pot. I mean, you could do some other things in it, but basically it's a crock pot, but you can sear saute in it. And I think that's a big advantage when you want to sear your meat. You don't want to have to do that on the stove and then transfer it to your crock pot, right? You just want to be able to do it all in one pot and then put it on to slow cook um, and then come back and have a nice dinner. All right, let's see. Um, All right. Someone said this on social media that it could kill you. I've never heard that before. Also that you could taste the air fry. I don't know what you're talking about, James. Can you clarify? I must have missed some messages because um, I'm not sure what you're talking about. So I don't even want to guess on that one. Sounds serious though, right? So why don't you um, expound on that a little bit and then I will uh, answer. Um, okay, Harry, I want to make cupcakes, which is the best ninja. Um, do you recommend? I have a few. The oven. I don't recommend the ninjas for cupcakes or cookies. I mean, if you have, a, if you have cupcakes and you're going to make like four of them, you can do it, but the air circulation is so important and the heat is so important for a cupcake and a muffin and all that stuff that you're just going to have to, you're going to have some trial and error, basically, if you want to do it like that. Um, I, I mean, unless you have the XL oven, that's one thing. I just saw Debbie's comment about XL oven. If you have the XL oven, that works just like an oven. So if you've got the Ninja XL oven, which is a countertop oven, that's what I would definitely use. If I, in fact, I have used that for cookies and, um, and cupcakes. It's just like an oven and it works great, but it's going to be challenging in all the other devices. What I will say is that you're going to need to, um, you can start out on a higher heat, but you're going to have to drop it down low to get it all cooked through. And that'll depend on what type of containers you use. A lot of times the four cups that will fit 
are going to be silicone and they don't heat as well. Uh, they don't transfer heat as well or as quickly um, as metal. So depends. There's a lot of depends there, but I would um, choose the XL oven. The grill, the XL or the other grill would probably be my second choice just because of the way that it's shaped and it's not tall and round. So you're going to have a little bit better air circulation like you would in, in the oven, I think, for the, those two things. So that's my final answer. All right. Um, all right. Mary says, I cook Smithfield tender loin. I'm assuming that's going to be a pork in the OL501, which is the six and a half quart. I, I PC'd for one minute, natural release for 12 minutes, never had pressure build up, nothing to release. Well, natural release doesn't release anything. Um, so if it went under pressure, you you build pressure. So if it did the countdown, you went under pressure. It wouldn't do the countdown unless you did. Um, and then the natural release for 12 minutes means that it does nothing but cool down. So there's nothing releasing. It's like kind of a misnomer, really. Nothing comes out of the vent um, unless you move the, the valve to the vent position. So nothing, when it's sealed, nothing's coming out, even when you're natural releasing. So that sounds perfectly normal. And it was overcooked at one minute. Now that's interesting. That makes me feel like it, the time to pressure was really long um, because, or it was a pork loin um, and not a tenderloin. So anyway, I'm surprised that it was up at 175, but I'm not surprised that you didn't see anything released or hear anything or have anything released when you move the the valve because there there it, it there isn't anything releasing during a natural release. Um, all right, let's see. I'm going down. Oh, Patricia's saying, please finish the course. Oh, I'm going to finish the course. Yeah. What happened is I was finished the course. And then Ninja put out the OL series with the smart lid. And I had to go back and do all of the instructional videos for those. And it's been a lot. And I've been working on them for two years now. Because once we did the big, you know, rollout of this course, and we, I mean, I was shooting these videos constantly and doing so much work and triple time. Honestly, I was burned out. So as soon, I mean, like probably within three months of releasing the course, Ninja put out the new models. I'm like, I, I just could not get back into the groove. So I am sorry it's taken so long, but I definitely will be finishing. I only have a few things left to do. All the instructional stuff is done. Now I just have to cook things in it. So I'm going to make some, you know, steam and crisp bread and I'm going to do something with steam bake. I think I already have proof done. Um, and there's a, a couple of others that I'm going to do with the smart lid that are different from the two lid models. All right, let's see. Things will never be finished. You know, John, you're so right. That course is going to be finished, though, because even if they put out another um, model, I'm going to do a separate course for it. it it's just going to get too confusing for everybody. So I'm going to have to do a separate one if there's some, you know, if there's some major changes um, or something like that, or maybe just do like a little addendum or something. But um, I'm surprised Ninja hasn't put out something new yet with that. I really am. They put out a whole bunch of new stuff and nothing. I've been looking, you know, waiting. They're going to do it as soon as I'm done with these videos. That's what they're going to do. But I would expect it would be coming out very soon if it if it's going to something that they're going to release um, in time for the holidays. Um, thank you so much, Celine. I appreciate that so much. Um, can I put glass cookware in the Speedy? Please don't laugh. I'm not going to laugh. No, not at all. Um, yes, you can put glass in the speedy. That's fine. As long as it's oven safe. Um, and, and I would say as long as it's safe, I'm sure all glass is safe for steam. So I wouldn't worry about that. Um, but yeah, as long as it's oven safe, you can put it in the speedy. No problem. The thing that you want to think about though, when you're doing that is 
again, because it's all about transfer of heat. When you are finished with your glass cookware and you go to take it out, put it on something that's wooden or put it on a cooling rack. Don't set it right down on like a granite or a quartz countertop because sometimes, especially if it's wet, that'll really make it happen. But sometimes as you set this hot, you know, uh, glass dish down on a cold surface, it can crack. And if there's water there, it's even worse. It'll crack even more often. So just be aware of that. But yes, you can absolutely do that. As far as good speedy um, accessories go, the accessories that work for the Ninja Foodi do work in the Ninja Speedy. Um, so because the, the it's okay to get, you know, all the accessories are usually round for the Ninja Foodi. Um, there's a few that are not, you know, they're square or rectangle, but a lot of times they're round and they do fit and they do fit on the tray and the speedy. I've already tested all that out. Um I haven't used the speedy enough to really like say these would be my go-to. I don't find that I can do the layering of food like I can in the Ninja Foodi. Um, and I've been working. I've been working on that a little bit, but anything that I've done layering, you don't need any accessories for, you know? So think about how you're going to use it before you go out and start buying accessories because you may not need as many as you, as you think. One thing I definitely would do is I would have some sort of a pan that will go in there that you could cover. And that way, if you wanted to have that on the top rack and you wanted it to be insulated some so that it cooked slower, you could do that because that's a way to like slow down the cooking process. So like, let's say you have something on the top rack of the speedy or the ninja foodie, because this applies to both. And and the whatever's underneath is going to cook quicker than what's going to cook on. I'm, I'm sorry. It's going to take longer to cook than what's on top. If you put it in a pan and cover it, you're slowing the cooking process because now the heat has to heat up the pan and then heat up the food. So you're just slowing things down a bit. And that's a way to control or I, I sometimes call it modifying the ingredients to get things to cook at the same time so that you can do more types of layered cooking. Um, and that's that's something I go over in the course uh, quite a bit. So even if you have the Ninja Speedy, the course, with the exception of pressure cooking, the course would apply to the Ninja Speedy because all the concepts and the principles are the same. I mean, cooking is cooking. This is one thing. Let me just say this right now. And if it comes across harsh or rude or anything like that, that is certainly not my intent. But I think people worry way, way, way too much about which appliance they have and think that they need direct instructions for that appliance when in fact you don't. You just need to think about, is my appliance about the same size as what the recipe is made in? Does my appliance have the ability to cook in that mode or method? So does my appliance have dry cooking like that would be baking, air frying, broiling. Okay. If so, then you can do any dry method cooking that's done in any appliance. It makes no difference what appliance it is. So it could be in, in the oven. Now, when we get to cupcakes and things like that, it gets a little trickier, but I'm talking about basic food like chicken and stuff like that. Um, Size matters. So the smaller the appliance, the more concentrated the heat, but also if it's taller and you know, not quite as wide, you know, thinner around, you're going to have a little bit more trouble with airflow. So that's when we get into temperature changes. If you have an appliance that um, does a moist cooking environment, pressure cooking, let's take that for an example, and you have a Ninja Speedy and you have a steaming environment, you can absolutely change the pressure cooking recipes to steaming recipes. You just have to think, okay, my pot's not going to be sealed, so I'm going to have more evaporation. I'm not going to be at high heats like pressure cooking, so I'm going to have to cook longer. But you can still do it, right? You can still do it because you've got a wet cooking method appliance. And then do you have a combo cooking method appliance? Do you have a steam bake, a steam crisp? So if you've got the Ninja Foodi with those models, 
You could do the Ninja Speedy recipes. If you have a Ninja Speedy with those models or the Ninja Combi, you can do the Ninja Foodie recipes. If you have the Ninja Foodie that doesn't have that combo function, but you have the two separate functions of steam and then air crisp or bake or roast, you can make those recipes too. You just need to think it through a little bit and think about the preheat time and how long it's going to steam. The preheat time for the Ninja Foodie and the Ninja Speedy on steam crisp for the steam portion is about five to eight minutes. And then on the steam bake, it's about 20 minutes. So way different. So you wouldn't interchange those two. But see what I'm saying? So don't don't worry so much about what appliance you have. You don't need them all. You don't need, I mean, coming from the person who has them all, you do not need them all. Um, and you can make just, you can make anything in anything that you have, right? Even if you don't have any of the appliances, you can make all the recipes a different way using a stove and an oven or other cooking methods, as long as they kind of match up. So look for wet cooking methods to match up with wet cooking methods. Look for dry cooking methods to match up with dry cooking methods on your appliance of choice and go for it. Start cooking. All right. There, I'm off my soapbox now. Okay. Um, okay. So Lisa, if it's counting down like it's steaming, we're back. So Lisa's having an issue for those of you that might just be joining. Um, Lisa's having an issue where she's making rice a roni from scratch. She's sauteing the rice using sear saute, and then she's adding the liquid, and then she's hitting steaming. And it's going to count down, but it's not actually steaming. So Lisa, my question would be, is it cooked at the end? Because you just may not be seeing the steam come out. Doesn't mean it's not steaming, unless it's not cooking. If it's not cooking, then you have a problem. And I would, again, call Ninja on that one because I'm not really sure how to troubleshoot. But if it's cooked at the end, it is steaming. Um, maybe you need to extend the time a little bit if it's steaming, if it's like skipping the preheat because you've already been cooking in it. Um, but I mean, I, I do that same thing and I don't, I don't never had any issues. Um, so it's either something's kind of going faulty or there isn't a problem, you know, and you don't have to worry about it. If your food's cooked at the end, don't worry about it. Um, Oh yeah. So they're, <laughs> that's so funny. People can see behind me, Jeff, and they're like telling me what my cat's doing behind me. That's so funny. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. All right. Let's, I'm trying to get down here. Um, hey, Annette, how are you? Cupcakes in an eight-hole pie maker. John, you're going to have to tell me about that. What is a eight-hole pie maker? You know, that's another thing I didn't think about is mini muffins. So if you wanted to make mini muffins or mini cupcakes, um, you could probably use an egg bite tray or something like that. Um so, but still it's for me, cupcakes and, and even baked goods. I did, a, I did some recipes with baked goods in the Ninja foodie and you have to really lower the heat. Like to make zucchini bread, I had to have the heat like at 275 degrees and, um, to, in order to get it to bake evenly, right. It worked. Um, the better thing about when you're doing cakes, not necessarily cupcakes, although cupcakes are smaller, so they are going to cook a little bit faster. But um, if you're doing cakes is to use a bunt pan that has a heating core. So that little middle acts as a heating core, and then you're heating from the outside and from the inside. And so things get done a lot more evenly than just an, like an eight inch pan of cake batter. All right, Rachel, Louise, I want to make your pressure cooker beef stew. I prefer vegetables firmer. Will they be firm or should I adjust the time? I haven't made that recipe in so long. I'm trying to remember. I mean, I don't like mushy vegetables, so they're, I, they shouldn't be mushy. I think it's a two-step recipe, right, where you do your beef chunks for a certain period of time. Let me look it up real quick and I can answer you. Um, uh, 
Oh, you know, it's funny. We're talking about crock pots and stuff. I'm actually using the slow cooker right now. Um, I put frozen uh, chili in it today and I have had it on low. So our dinner's ready because I knew I would be on the live here. All right. So let me see. Jump into the recipe. Um, Okay, so after you cook the beef, you then put the lid on, pressure cook on high for two minutes. When done, immediately release the pressure. So um, I don't think there's any problem with going down to one minute or even zero minutes, Rachel, just to make sure that your vegetables are the texture that you want. Um, there is a, a, a little bit of time to pressure that second pressure cook. It's not as much. Um, as the first time, but it, there is some, actually it might even be as much because we're a little bit thicker in the pot then. Um, so yeah, so you could go down to one or even zero minutes, just hit the pressure and then hit the time down to one or all the way down to zero hit start. And just the time that it takes to come back up to pressure, will cook the vegetables. And I think you'll be fine. If for some reason they are not cooked enough, then just simmer the, uh, you know, simmer the stew until they're cooked to your desired texture. Okay, Wendy, I want to make egg bites with my silicone minis. Advice, good, bad, or indifferent. Steam them. That's my advice. Steam them. Don't pressure cook them. Pressure cooking eggs out of the shell. Let's clarify that. Pressure cooking eggs in the shell is the most amazing thing in the world for deviled eggs or egg salad, things like that because the shells just fall off. And there are so many naysayers out there that get on me and other people. I don't know why you would want to pressure cook your eggs. I guarantee you they haven't done it because once you do it, you will know why we pressure cook our eggs. They are perfect every single time. Once you get your balance of temperatures and times and stuff, they are like every single time they're perfect and the shells just fall off. And, and the egg white is intact and beautiful. So you can make beautiful deviled eggs that everybody's going to be like, how did you not gouge the whites trying to peel them? You pressure cooked and that you don't need to. Oh, it's amazing. Anyway, when the eggs are out of the shell, pressure cooking them is such a high heat. It changes the proteins. It denatures the proteins. They become rubbery. It is not a good texture. I can't stand it. I try to do it. I can't do it. It's got to be steam for me all the way. So that would be my advice. I know some people pressure cook their egg bites and they say they're delicious. I can't do it because they're always rubbery for me. Um, okay. Can you tell me the main difference between the Foodi 2 lid versus the Speedy? I have seen the Speedy for $79.99 and it's interesting to me. Yes, there are two main differences. Three. Three main differences. Three differences, okay? The Ninja Foodi is either going to be six and a half quarts or eight quarts or five quarts, but they don't really sell that model very often. The Ninja Speedy comes in one size at six and a half. No, whoop, this big difference, six quarts. So it's a half a quart smaller than the Ninja Foodi six and a half quart, six quarts. It is square and not round. It is a little bit shorter. I'm getting into four now, but the main difference is the Speedy does not pressure cook. So that's the main difference. It's smaller, it's square, and it doesn't pressure cook. But as far as like air frying and doing other things, it works great. It really does. It works great. People love it. Now there's a new thing out called the Ninja Combi, which I did break down and get just for you guys, because I've been asked to do a comparison between the Speedy and the Combi. And I'm going to do that soon. Um, I was expecting the Combi to be a little bit bigger. I was expecting it to be my new bread oven. I was so excited. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get a loaf of bread in there. It's not that big, like from top to bottom. It's a little wide, you know, but I need something that's top to bottom. So anyway, just to throw that out there too, there's a third, there's the Ninja Combi now. Um, oh, Wendy, you're, you're an instant pot, huh? Well, you can do most of the same thing unless you have the Duo Crisp and Pro Crisp. And then that is comparable to the Ninja Foodi. But yeah, when you're 
when you're ready to switch over, you are going to be amazed. Like all the things that the Ninja Foodie does that most Instant Pots do not do is worth its weight in gold. And it used to be that they were a lot more expensive. So it used to be that you could get the Instant Pot and you can still get Instant Pots fairly inexpensive. But some of the higher end models that have the crisping lid, I'm seeing comparable prices now between Ninja and Instant Pot. So all right. Kyle wants to know what I'm drinking. This is right now. It's very watered down. It is deep eddy grapefruit and club soda. That's my drink tonight, which I'm not really drinking because it's very watered down. I like deep eddy grapefruit though. Cindy says that the kittens are being entertaining. What are they doing back there, Jeff? <laughs> are you watching them? Um, Deborah, is my husband even back there? Jeff? What? Oh, he's back there. He's just not listening to me. Um, what are they, they're saying the cats are being funny. What are they doing? Oh, here's one coming up. This is boots. Um, okay. So have you ever made nuts and bolts? I've never heard it called nuts and bolts before. Well, I have, but I've never called it nuts and bolts. Um, Chex Mix. Yes, I have made it. In fact, I'm planning on making it this fall for a recipe in the Ninja because I have one. What, um, do you remember Jeff in my cookbook, what the Chex Mix flavor is? I did a different flavor. I don't remember either, but I'm going to do an original one. I did some other flavor. Like in my cookbook, like I did um, I did pretzels, but I, I think I did pumpkin pretzels. I think. I don't remember what's in my cookbook. But anyway, um, I did something, another variation of the Chex Mix, but I'm going to do the original this fall. I, I've been trying to get to Sam's because they usually have those three packs of cereal. So I could just grab, you know, one or two of those. And then I bought the nuts the other day. So I'm in the ready for that. Sue. Yeah. The Ninja sizzle. So that is a, like a little grill. Um, some people absolutely love it. I don't have it. You just reminded me I was going to get it with Kohl's cash just to see what it's all about. See if it's something that like would be quick on my counter for like just doing something quick. I've been using the outdoor wood fire for almost everything. Like I love it. But Jeff and I did um, sausages in the Ninja XL grill last night and they turned out amazing. But the Ninja sizzle is like just another little, it's just kind of a, I think compact. I don't know. I don't have it, but it's, it's not expensive compared to some of them. Let me see. Um, let me go to Kohl's and see. Um, also, guys, you know what? I want to put in, in case you want to join this group, now, I haven't been posting lately because I've just been so busy that I asked my friend Lauren to please um, just keep up with the posting. So she's been doing it for me. But we have an, a ninja group that's specifically for deals. So when we find and we scout, well, she's been doing it. She's been doing all the work. I'm really let her down here, but, um, we scour all these websites all every day, looking for the best price on certain Ninja foodie or Ninja sizzles or Ninja wood fires or Ninja, whatever. Um, and we post them in the group. So like, it's a great group to join. If you're looking for either a gift for somebody or you're looking for a certain appliance ninja or you're looking for something else because sometimes we will post other things that aren't ninja as long as they're like kitchen related they're kind of intertwined right so uh and lauren is a really good deal finder like she's much better than i am um She's much, she's much better than I am. So I put the link in there. If you guys want to join that group, we'd love to have you. It's not an engaged group. Like we don't, we don't talk about anything really. It's just literally you would get notifications or you would go there to look for what deals are going on that day. Now, let me see. I think I have some Kohl's cash. Let's see what the prices are on the Ninja Sizzle. I don't know if it's not back in stock yet at Kohl's. So, yeah, so they've been selling out 
like uh, my favorite place to get things is Kohl's because I think they've got the best prices when you can combine, you know, Kohl's cash and then their sales and then you know, things like that. So, um, okay. So James, I believe there was a rumor that an air fryer kills. Um, no, no, an air, I, I, they're probably talking about fumes and things like that. Um, I mean, as a nurse, I, there's a lot more that's going to kill people than an air fryer. I mean, I guess they could, they could burn your house down, but so could anything else. So no, I wouldn't worry about that at all. I think, especially with a, with a reputable company. Now I might not want to run out and buy the cheapest air fryer that I could find that's made from a manufacturer that doesn't have any stringent testing, but I think to be sold in the U.S., they kind of have to match, you know, meet these criteria. But I mean, you're going through a reputable brand, you know, of any kind. It doesn't even have to be Ninja. Any reputable brand, it's going to be okay. I mean, there's always those outliers, right? There's always that thing. There's always that one appliance or, or you know, that one air fryer that something happened or um, one problem and then everybody gets freaked out like, about it. But I wouldn't worry about it at all. Okay, Leanne, I need a new pressure cooker. My two lid foodie died. What should I buy? I would say I would get the Ninja foodie that has the best price with the most functions. Um, and I think I like the two lid now. I was a little skeptical. Some people are not, they don't like it. Um, my, uh, uh, a friend of mine, Brittany, she got the one lid and she hated it. She went back to the two lid. I like the one lid. I haven't had any issues with cooking in it, but she did. Um, that could have just been the lot that she got. Cause you know, I think those things matter too. It seems, um, you know, different runs are, they're manufactured. Even if they're at the same place, they're still, it's a different run and sometimes things go wrong. But, um, I like, I like, the one lid. So I, and I like all the functions on it. So that would be my price. That would be my choice. I don't necessarily think like if you, if you want to get the um, eight quart, I don't necessarily think the OL 701, which is the bells and whistles. That's got the auto release of the pressure and it's got a probe and stuff. I thought that I would really use those and that they would really change everything. And honestly, they just haven't for me. So I don't think and it's a big price jump. And we're talking $80 or more usually. So I would stick with the OL601, which is the eight quart, but without all the bells and whistles, but all the functions. And you can get a much better deal on it. Um, Leanne says, yes, the, the Fat Daddy 8-inch pan for the Speedy, really nice. Yes, I agree. That's what we were talking about a little bit wh a while ago. Um Okay. Yeah. So Sue says the Ninja Sizzle has an easy to clean lid and it's, and that is dishwasher safe. I heard that. That is pretty impressive, isn't it? Which means that all the heat comes from the bottom though, but that's okay on a grill, right? So it doesn't air fry. It is literally a countertop grilling appliance and you can griddle on it too. So you could do your pancakes and things like that. Um, I don't think I'd have a whole lot of use for it myself, but I'm, I'm probably going to get it just so I can check it out so I can answer your questions a little bit more. Hey, Morel, how are you? Um, good night, Harry. All right, let's see. Steam and crisp wings in the Speedy. After two batches, it burns in the bottom pan. So I switched to air fry and it's not that big of a deal. Am I doing something wrong? Okay, steam and crisp wings in the Speedy. After two batches, it burns in the bottom. So I switch to air fry. It's not that big of a deal. Am I doing something wrong? So I would need a little bit more information. So I'm trying to... Um, so steam and crisp, if you're doing two batches, meaning that you are putting one batch in, you're steaming and crisping, you're taking that batch out. Are you then adding more liquid to do the second batch? If not, there's the problem. If you are, then it could just be because we're, it's already hot. It's kind of evaporating a lot quicker. So just add another little bit, a couple tablespoons extra of water for that second batch and things should not be burning on the bottom. Um, but yeah, that would be my two things for steam and crisp wings, which by the way, I don't think I've tried yet. 
And I think that would be good because I pressure, I have pressure cooked wings. I've done both. I've done just straight air fry and I've done a pressure and then an air fry. Oh, dogs don't start. And I like the texture when you pressure cook. Although I think in my recipe for Asian sticky wings, probably pressure cook for a little bit longer than necessary. I was brand new. Um, it worked. So I threw out the recipe right now. I'm, I do things totally different where like I'll test five different timings, you know, for certain things. Um, so I, I think I like the way that it, it, it hydrates the skin and loosens it away from the meat. I'm talking about pressure cooking. Steaming would do the same thing. It plumps the skin up. So then when it, when you air fry afterwards, it's just a really good crispy texture and, and it pulls away from the meat. So you don't have everything pull off at once. You know, sometimes when I just air fry wings, the skin is very thin and it just sort of a little lackluster. So uh, pumping it or plumping it up with a little bit of moisture and then air frying seems so ridiculous. Like, why would you do that? But it actually works pretty well. Um, okay. So Deborah's saying that vegetables in my pot roast aren't mushy. They are perfect. Good. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. I, I hate to yawn. Um, so John says, Louise, last few years have been crazy are using pie makers for cooking almost everything. I don't even know what a pie maker is. Oh, oh, so a pie maker is an appliance, John. Is that what you're saying? <coughs> I see. <coughs> there goes the cough again. Mm. Mm. I've been doing pretty good, too. That's the first one today. I'm uh, probably because I'm talking so much. Um, oh, I I get you now, John. I'm I was thinking of a pie maker as like a pie plate. I don't know, but a pie maker is an appliance in and of itself. I gotcha. Okay, Annette. Um, you asked, I remember that if I knew what a Christmas cake was and my reply was, I don't know what it is. It is a fruit cake. Okay. All right. I do know what a fruit cake is. I've never liked them though. Um, well, you know, and I would, I bet you in different countries, fruit cake is totally different, right? Um, cause you're talking of, are, are, again, it depends on where you're, where you're from. Are you talking about the kind of fruit cake that's got like that gelled fruit stuff in it? I guess that's what it is. I don't know. It's real dense, right? Um, I've never been a fan of it. So I'm not sure if you're going to get a recipe from me. Like I can't make split pea soup and I know people want split pea and ham soup, a recipe from me. I can't do the texture. I can't do it. It just, I, I love peas. I love ham. I don't even necessarily mind the flavor of the split pea soup, but I cannot, I cannot do it. No. There goes my cats. They love to get into everything. Now they've knocked over my flower arrangement. Um, anyway, so I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, I can't promise you that. Anyway, I'll look up fruitcake. Because I think fruitcake would be an incredible pressure cooker recipe because it's already dense. So I think it could be something that would be done perfectly fine in a pressure cooker, which is not true of all cakes. Um, all right. I'm going to scroll down here. Um, okay. So, Melena, my Instant Pot died. So now I have a Ninja 14 to 1. I tried brown rice. It's mush. How do I cook brown rice in the Ninja? Um, I don't have an exact timing for you because I have not tested brown rice. Believe it or not, in four years, I've not tested brown rice. And Jeff loves brown rice. Have I ever made brown rice in the Ninja? I don't know. I don't like brown rice. I like brown rice. Yeah, but when, when you get Chinese food, you always ask for brown rice. No, I don't. Oh, you don't like fried rice. That's it. Okay. So we'll forget. I don't know. I don't know my husband's taste. I thought I did. Okay. So I haven't done brown rice, but if it's mush, two things are going on, either too much liquid, too much time, or well, three things or both. So I would always start with 
You could start with a half a cup, one cup of rice is probably really minimum. But another thing, and, and let me finish my first thought. You could try with one cup of rice and change your water ratio a little bit. Brown rice does need more liquid than white rice, um, but maybe you're setting your time for too long. So try that first. Same amount of liquid, but lower your time down. Let it natural release so it continues to absorb, but your pressure cook time goes down. The other thing you can do is do pot and pot cooking, which is really nice for rice, um, especially when you're trying to like figure things out. And if it's like working right in the inner pot, do it pot and pot, meaning have a pan, put your rice in, put your liquid in. And then you also will put liquid on the bottom and you would pressure cook that way. That tends to turn out, in my experience, a little bit more predictably. Um, for white rice, it's like two minutes of pressure cook time with equal parts water to rice. Certain rices, I'll add in another splash into the pan. So a, a equal plus maybe a tablespoon or two. It depends, but sometimes. And then it's a two-minute pressure cook with a 10-minute natural release for white rice. For brown rice, I would probably go up to five minutes in pot and pot, um, maybe even a little bit longer. But again, it, I'm guessing I would think that there would be a recipe out there for brown rice, um, and it should work the same in the Ninja as it does in the, is in the Instant Pot. Um, so yeah, a lot of little variables there, but I would look for a recipe maybe made in the Ninja for brown rice and see what they're doing. All right. Yes. Shelly, those pressure cooked eggs. They're amazing. Amazing. And, and it, every time there's a comment, like anytime there's a post on social media about pressure cooking eggs, there's always a handful of people that absolutely think it's the most ridiculous thing they ever heard. And why would you ever do it? And I just kind of laugh. I was just like, oh, because they haven't tried it. You know, they haven't tried it or they tried it and they had the wrong timing because it really does depend on personal preference, what your timing is. Um, <clears throat> okay. So, and I have the foodie 14 and one and the 15 and one. Can I use a clay pot in either? So if the clay pot can go in the oven, you can use the clay, which it can, you can use the clay pot in your foodie. Um, I don't know what the five in one is, but whatever it is under a dry cooking environment, if the clay pot can go in the microwave or be used in a wet cooking environment or place where things would steam, then you can use it in the foodie. Um, I don't know, like it depends on if it's glazed or not. So there's a lot of little variables. So just how can you use it like in other ways in your kitchen? And then you could figure out if you could use it in there, but definitely dry. I'm sure it's going to be, it's going to be heat resistant, right? Or it's going to be oven proof, I should say. Um, pressure cooking, I would not um, because there could be little fractures in the clay pot and I, I would not do that. It, it could crack. Right. Um, so I wouldn't pressure cook, but steam or things like that. If it can be subjected to the microwave, it should be fine steaming too, because the microwave does heat things to a point where it's steaming. Um, in, in my experience anyway, I don't like the microwave. I am not a microwave cook. So, um, all right, Louise, when I pressure cook hard boiled legs, I did 444 in my old 701. My new OL 701 has the eggs come out with green and around the yolk. Should I try 333? Yeah, I would. I would try, uh, yeah, I would try 335. You know, the, the, the back number doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, and then if they're not done enough, then I would do 345. 345. Yeah. I would keep trying just different. It really makes um, these little things. I don't know why one 701 would do one and, and another one would do another. Like that doesn't make sense. They should all work the same. But I have heard from people who have been working with Instant Pots forever say that each Instant Pot has little nuances only known to that Instant Pot owner. So there are going to be little variables. So yeah, I would definitely try 333, see what happens. Um, James is trying to research the combi. Yeah, there's not a whole lot out on it. Um, join our group, our Ninja Combi group. I can give you the link, although I will say I've been very, 
very bad, which, oh, it's not our Ninja Combi group. It's our Ninja Speedy group because I'm allowing Combi post in there right now because I want to find out how comparable they are because I don't know if we need a second group for it. I think the recipes are just going to go together. Um, Debbie say my Chex Mix in my cookbook is pumpkin. Really? I don't think so, Debbie. <coughs> my pretzels were. I don't think I made pumpkin. Let me find out. I'm going to find out right now. Let's see. Flavors of fall. And I should have it in my files on my phone, right? Jeff, do you have my cookbook on your phone? Do I what? <clears throat> do you have my cookbook on your phone? No. Would it be in files? No. Oh, yes, it is. <coughs> <coughs> okay, let's see. I have pumpkin risotto on there. All right, beverages and snacks. Buffalo cereal mix. So it's a spicy, like a buffalo chicken type. There's chicken in it, obviously. Um, okay, so Wolfman. Well, I was just talking about that. Do I have a cookbook for the Ninja Foodie? I also have a little Ninja with Dehydrate, but no book. Do you have anything like that? I don't know what the little ninja with dehydrate is, but if it didn't come with a book, you can usually go online for it, it, whatever country you're in, go to the ninja website and you can usually download the books. Um, so you could do that. As far as the ninja foodie goes, I have an ebook that's called um, the flavors of fall and it is recipes that aren't on my website. So they are different recipes. Um, but it's not a printed book. And I will post a link for that in just a minute. There's some really good recipes in there. Now that we're getting into fall, I should probably promote that a little bit more. I think there's like 33 recipes in there. Um, it's pretty cool too, because let me get back to you guys. Um, I did a lot of work on it. Like I did it myself. Let me find it again. Let me see. I don't know if I can show you on my phone. But anyway, so it's got, let's, I, you probably can't see that because of all this stuff. You can't see. There's no way you're going to see. Okay. Never mind. You're not going to be able to see it. But anyway, I did a, um, I did a lot of stuff with it where it's easy to navigate. So like there's a little pumpkin. Is it a pumpkin or a leaf? I think it's a pumpkin in the corner, the right-hand corner. And if you needed to go back to the table of contents to see a new recipe, all you have to do is hit the pumpkin and you go back to the table of contents and then you can click whatever one you want. It'll jump you to that recipe. And then if you wanted to go back, you do the same thing. So it's pretty cool. It navigates pretty easily. I'm pretty happy with it. I laid it out myself. I didn't know what I was doing. It took me forever. I'd learn in design. It was a hot mess and it's a lot of work. That's why everybody keeps saying, will you do another one? I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I can. I'm going to try though. I want a printed one next time. Next time we'll be printed. Well, I say it will be printed. I'm hoping next time it'll be printed. Um, okay. What are my thoughts about the Ninja knives? I love them. I really do. And I've had all kinds of knives, probably not like the most professional top end knives, but I've had knives from Hinkle, from Wusthof. Uh, Pampered Chef has a knife that I liked the the balance and the weight of, and I liked the way it, it cut. Um, but once I went to the Ninja knives, like I like the balance and I like the way they cut. And it's so easy to sharpen them in that little sharpener thing that comes. I really like them. I really do. Um, and I wasn't sure, but it's all about the balance and the weight and the feel of it in your hand, Jane. So when you're looking for knives, I do recommend trying them out first. Now with Ninja, if you've got one of them, you could always send them back, but whether you go through Kohl's or whatever, if they don't, if they don't feel right in your hand, get rid of them because that's when things get a little dangerous. They need to feel weighted right. Okay. Cause some are too light. 
and they're not, you're not going to have good control over any light knife. Like I had a company send me knives and I'm not going to say who they were or anything like that because I'm not insulting them. But um, I was like, these are so light. You can't even do anything with them. Right. I mean, yeah, the price point was good, but they're worthless. So yeah. So just feel them out first. That's the thing. Feel them out. Um, well, thank you, Anne. I love you too. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. You're welcome, Aaron, for the information on the speedy, my limited, um, my limited knowledge. I don't have that much. The people in the speedy group are pretty amazing. Like Leanne's in there. She's doing a lot of stuff with the combi. So if you guys are interested in that, you're going to check out her recipes and stuff like that. Um, Okay, great, James. I'll go in and approve you. We're all, we're all. Uh, I think it's all approval. And if you join the deals group, it's you probably will wait less time. My approvals, they're taking me forever these days. So I'm going to have to hire somebody to do my approvals for me because I just, I'm not getting to it. And then I have like 200 and all these different groups. You like, you know, 200 here and 200 here and 200 there. And it's a lot because I go through each one individually. I don't, I'm not, not a mass approver. So anyway, okay. Um, okay. So if you added more liquid, then back off the liquid for the brown rice, because that's going to um, help turn it to mush too, because it's just going to absorb too much. So back off the liquid, back off the time and see if you have better results. So Stacia wasn't happy with the with the sizzle, it smoked too much. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Fair. Fair enough. Um, I had that problem with the original grill and I returned it. And then people convinced me to get it again. And my second one didn't do it. Second one did not smoke. First one was terrible. Like I couldn't even use it. It would set my my um, smoke alarms off all the time. Um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I was thinking of the brown rice. I'm sorry. I'm getting my people confused. Okay. But after the second batch, the fat from the wings and the water mix in the bottom and burns. Shouldn't burn. If you have enough water in there, it shouldn't be burning. Um, it may not be that. Uh, it might not be the water and grease in the bottom is not going to be giving you smoke. Um, it's just not hot enough to do that. It's just not going to happen. The, the water will evaporate before that happens. So... It's either steam and not smoke, but if you're smelling it, then it is probably on the grate itself. That's probably what's happening. Um, but uh, yeah, you're saying the bottom no longer smokes. Well, I'm going to have to ask if the water's covering the entire bottom or is the fat dripping on the sides? Is that causing the problem? Because fat in water is not going to smoke like that. Jeff, think that through for me. If there's fat from chicken in water in the bottom of a of a pot that is then has the heating element going down, it would not be burning because the water would evaporate before the fat burned. Uh, yeah, the water is naturally cool. Yeah, yeah. So I, I would say that's impossible from, yeah. That, that's impossible, but something else could be happening. So it's either on the sides or you don't have enough water in the bottom that's not covering the whole bottom. Okay. Candied fruit. Yes, that's it. And I think it would be great as a pressure cook recipe. So Annette, I am going to commit to you to do that. So Jeff, you're going to eat fruit cake. What? What? Talking about those. Candied fruit. Make it with real fruit. Nope. <laughs> oh. so cb says american fruit cake is like a brick i soak my fruit and brandy for a couple of days and it is so moist well we might have to do it your way dear um okay so christina so the apple fritters are not like a fruit cake that um that we're talking about a fruit cake that we're talking about is like this little compressed rectangle that is it is it is like a brick and it is dense and it has all this dried fruit in it and i've never liked it but i'm gonna buy one as soon as i i'll have to order one probably from amazon because they're not quite in the stores yet 
And I am going to make my own version because it will work out with pressure cooking, I think. So Annette, I'm going to commit. I will try it. I will try to do one. Um, the apple fritters are, they're totally different. And I hope you love them. I love that recipe. Um, okay. So Liz is giving some advice on the brown rice. Um, 15 minutes, then 10 minute natural release, one to one water. Interesting. Okay. I would think brown rice would need more liquid than just one to one. So one to one, meaning one cup rice, one cup water, two cups rice, two cups water, one to one ratio. Um, now remember when you get up into like two cups, three cups, four cups, you've got more liquid, more volume in the pot. You're going to have a longer time to pressure. So I usually say if you're, if you're cooking your rice and it's a one to one, one cup, water, one cup rice, and you have a time and let's say it's, it's three minutes. Okay. And that's your perfect time. Then when you get up to two cups, you are going to want to do a shorter time. So maybe take it down to two minutes and maybe just a little bit longer natural release. You've got to kind of play around with that because it takes longer to come to pressure, which is building up and it's cooking at the same time that it's building that steam to go under pressure. So you can overcook the rice as you go up in the increments of two cups, three cups, four cups. Four cups might be hard to get done actually on pressure because you'd have to do zero minutes. And then I'm not even sure if that would, if it would work that way. So, um, but one cup or two cups is usually fine. Okay. Oh my gosh. So James, funny story. This is a true story. I write recipes for a living and I cook for a living, right? But I don't eat correctly because if I'm making cinnamon raisin muffins, all I'm making for three days is cinnamon raisin muffins and I'm starving, right? Because I have no food. Sometimes I'll heat stuff up that's in the freezer, but if I'm not feeding my husband, I don't worry about myself. So the other day it was two o'clock. I had not eaten anything all day. I was absolutely starving. I said, I have to eat something. I grabbed a bag of peas. This is no lie. Right out of the freezer, threw them in the microwave, which I'm not a microwave cook. That's how hungry I was. Threw them in the microwave with a splash of water and microwaved them for two minutes, pulled them out, threw butter, salt, pepper in them. And I ate that bowl of peas and they were the best peas ever. I love peas, but ham and split pea soup. Nope, nope, nope. All right. Um... Pam, I do not have a cookbook for dehydrating, um, but the Flavors of Fall cookbook, which I put into the chat, is for that. The dehydrating, though, dehydrating is dehydrating for the most part. Now, it's a little bit, there are little things in the Ninja Foodie because, again, we're talking about look at the size, right? So if a dehydrator is about the size of the XL oven, which is the reason why I got the XL oven in the first place because I wanted a dehydrator thought might as well get this. It does everything. It's so amazing. Like the XL oven as a countertop oven is amazing. I absolutely love it. And it dehydrates great. But in the Ninja, we've got a smaller environment that's higher. So we've got the airflow again. So if you get a dehydrating rack, which I think has six layers, you will oftentimes have to rotate the layers out to get things evenly dehydrated. But usually the timing is about the same. The temperatures are always going to be about the same. You don't have to make adjustments. You can look up any dehydrating recipe on the internet and feel comfortable setting your foodie for that. Because, um, you know, we're talking low temperatures and stuff. And then check it and rotate your racks and you'll be fine. Or you can get a book on dehydrating. But honestly, it's so easy. Um, unless the cookbook had like different things that aren't like, standard, I would just Google it. Um, you kind of get a feel for it after a while. Like I do all my herbs somewhere around 125 to 135, you know, Fahrenheit. So you kind of get a feel for it. Like I'm using dehydrate for my, um, peppermint meringues this year. So I've made them. They're amazing. I am going to test it in the oven. So I am going to test it. I'm going to probably test it. Maybe I'll test it in the foodie too. Um, cause you know, those would those would work on that rack. So I might test those in the foodie because um, that's one cookie that would that would actually work in there. Oh, okay. I'll do that. Um, but 
the dehydrator on, on the XL oven does such a great job with meringues. I absolutely love it. Better than my oven when I tried to do it at 200 degrees. So you really need for a good meringue cookie, you really need to be about that 175, 180 mark in my opinion. Okay. Um, all right. Well, will I be doing Ninja Combi recipes? I don't know. Um, I am really trying hard to get away from doing specific recipes for specific appliances because I want to try to educate people on how to use the appliance they have to make the recipe that they want um, so that you guys aren't stuck thinking, I can't find any recipes because that is a common thing, right? We see that in Facebook groups. I can't find any recipes for X, Y, and Z, you know, for, for this appliance. And you don't need specific recipes yeah, the, the basics are kind of helpful, of course, but I, I mean, any of my air frying recipes should work in the Ninja Combi just fine. Any Ninja Speedy recipes should work in the Ninja Combi just fine. Um, and even the Ninja Foodie recipe should work in the Ninja Combi as long as the functions are matching up as far as wet method, dry method. So in the Ninja Combi, you could go and get air frying recipes. Um, on the internet. So you can look all day long. Although I really hope you look for mine because mine, I promise you are tested. Like, oh my God, how many times, Jeff, those air fryer recipes? Like it took me how long to do the onion rings a year? Oh, yeah. oh my gosh. Um, so when I put them out, they are good. Like I promise they're good. Um, but I haven't even used the Ninja Combi yet, so I can't tell you if I'm going to do any recipes. That's the quick answer. I'm a, I, I'm always a long answer person, though. Um, all right. So brown rice for two, 11 ounces of rice, two cups of water, pot and pot, two cups water in the ceramic pot, cook high, 15 minutes, quick release. All right, John, thanks for that. I appreciate it. Hey, Brittany, how are you? All right, let's see. Um, Anne says, I need some uh, honey, lemon, and whiskey. You know, this cough, I, it's been going on for four weeks now. Uh, my friend Lauren had it. My husband had it. I still has it. Um, and and I had it. it, it go, it's like gone forever. And then all of a sudden, just tonight, came back. Um, George has a question. Does hard water versus soft water make a difference when pressure cooking? George, that is an incredible question to ask. I do not know the answer. I'm trying to think. Did I? I didn't have the Ninja Foodie when I was on well water. Um, I don't know that answer. I would say no, but I don't know for sure. So if anybody else knows... Chime in? That's a good question, though. I'm going to have to do some research on that. Um, all right. So Missy's got a recipe to share. Um, you take hamburger, break it up in the pan, drain, then put potatoes and then sauerkraut and then cheese. Oh, that sounds good. I don't, Jeff, do you like sauerkraut? Not really. Oh, he's old. Oh. Yeah, he is not a sauerkraut person, but I love it. And that sounds good. Um, all right, Sharon. Have you noticed cream cheese packages have water in the cheese as the last two pressure cooked cheesecakes have not turned out soft? Have I, They have turned out soft in the middle? We need this fixed too. That's fine. Um have not turned out soft in the middle and the rest is firm. I'm assuming maybe you're saying they're soft in the middle. Would more cornstarch help? I have never in my life put cornstarch in a cheesecake. I never have. So I don't know. I don't even know how to advise you. I know people do. I'm not saying it's wrong or anything like that, but I do not do it. So would it help? Yes, probably. But is that the right? Is that the real answer? I don't know. I mean, I mean, when you first take a cheesecake out, it should be like jiggly. But once it sets up overnight, it should be you know the same texture all the way through, right? Um, 
So yeah, without seeing the recipe or anything like that, are you covering your cheesecake so that it's not getting the water in there? That would be something that I would consider. But um, yeah, I think cornstarch would probably help. But since I've never used it in a cheesecake, I don't even know how you mix it in. Because usually with a cornstarch, you do a slurry. So I don't even understand how it, I've just never done it. So anyway, that's that. Okay. Um, okay. So Sue, so, this is a good question. So the pots and pans, this is the thing with the pots and pans. And let's talk about the never stick first. Okay. There's like three different varieties of never stick. The only one that I recommend are the premium. I don't even recommend the vivid. I hear they peel. There's the ones I think that are bright red, but you got it. If you got a great price at, at, at Ollie's a few months ago, you're gold. That price was so good. I would have bought them too. Um, but if you're investing in pans, I have not personally had any problems with the premium set of the Ninja Foodie Never Stick. So I haven't had any issues. Mine aren't peeling. I use them. I abuse them. I use metal in them because you can. I put them in the dishwasher. I don't know if you're supposed to, but I do. Um, and I haven't had any issues at all with any peeling or anything like that. I mean, I have scraped them, but the the coating's all the way through, so it doesn't it doesn't even matter, right? It's still nonstick. Nonstick is, is and never stick. Okay, never stick is kind of another misnomer, like natural release, because never stick. Things can stick, right? They can stick. If you have your if you have your heat high and you throw an egg in the pan, guess what you're doing? Just like you do with pressure cooking, eggs out of the shell. You're denaturing the proteins. The proteins will stick. They will stick, um, but they're easy to clean out too because the pan's nonstick, so it's easy to clean out. Um, but people complain about that. I love them. Now, if I was to invest in pans that I wanted to have for the rest of my life, which I have and I do, they would be all clad. They're stainless though. So there's a little bit, if you're not familiar with working or cooking on stainless, there's a little bit of a learning curve. But the people that think that stainless sticks aren't cooking on it properly because it doesn't. It's perfect. It's great. I love it. Um, but there's, again, there's a certain way to do it. You've got to have your pan preheated and things like that. Um, so all clad is a great brand, but Ninja also just came out with a stainless set. And I think they came out or maybe it's hex clad. That always looks interesting to me. That's supposed to be like Pamper Chef is a version too. It's supposed to be like a hybrid between stainless and nonstick. So um, I personally, I'm of the school of thought that there is a time and a place for a cast iron pan, there is a time and a place for a stainless steel pan. And there are times and places where I want nonstick, right? Um, so I have different cookware. So you might not want to go out and buy a whole set of one type of cookware. You might want to think about, well, for nonstick, like eggs come to mind immediately, right? I mean, eggs and things like that. So maybe a nice skillet for a nonstick. And then maybe you want a cast iron, um, you know, Dutch oven type of thing so that you can use it as a cast iron pan, but you could also use it in an oven, right? For braising and things like that. So that could be a ceramic, that could be ceramic coated. They're a little different, but you know, you could do that. Um, a cast iron frying pan is probably like one of my favorite things, although I don't cook on it very often, but it is one of my favorite things, um, because of the, how long the heat, you know, stays there. I mean, it's just great, but it's only good for certain things. Other things it would overcook in a second. Right. Um, and then of course I said stainless, right. Or stainless. So stainless is my go-to if I'm going to brown and braise. So if I wanted to brown up proteins and then throw in some braising liquid and either cover it and then braise on the stove or put it in the oven to finish, stainless is my, my go-to for that. Um, well, I should say it used to be because really I don't cook with anything but the Ninja Foodie now. <laughs> really, all my stuff is done in there, really. All right, I can't, um, my mouse is not working now. So let me hide that comment. Okay. Um, 
So the never stick five quart pan with lid, is that like the possible pot? No, the possible pan. You can get such a good deal. Well, at least a few months ago in our deal group, I was seeing them for, you know, like, like way low prices. I can't remember now exactly what they were, but I want to say like, like $50 or so, something like that. The colors, excuse me, weren't always good, but that's a good pan. I have one of those. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I'm so sorry for yelling. Hey, George, you stop. George, over here. Now, George, now, now. Attacking the cat. Now, sit. Sit down. You stay right here by me. Okay, I'm really sorry, but that was serious. I had to, I had to handle that one. Um, my husband's letting the dogs out one by one because it's um, it's dark out and there's skunks in our yard and Gus got sk sprayed by one. So we're trying to be really careful. No, yep. sit right now. Sit, you sit and you stay. You sit and you stay. Okay, this will be the last time I do this here because this doesn't work. Um, okay, I, my mouse is not working now, Jeff. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right. Um, uh, John, I think your version of fruitcake is a little bit different than our version of fruitcake. Why is this mouse not working? I'm going to be totally um, like not able to do anything if I can't get this mouse. Well, okay. I don't understand what's going on. It's telling me, get off, get off the computer. Okay. My cat just hit the eight ball in the pocket. Gotcha. I was like, oh my gosh, they didn't get the cover off, did they? That pool table is covered. George, um, Gus just went over to Jeff and Jeff's like, you stink. He still stinks from, from the skunk. And how long ago was that, Jeff? A couple of weeks. Got another week from the Okay, here we go. Question. Bill, a question about the wood fire connect. I live where we have excessively cold weather a lot of the year. Can the unit be used indoors, not using the smoke, of course, similar to the regular XL grills? Ninja says, no, they're outdoor appliances. So I, you know, I can't advise that you could use them inside, um, even without smoke. But I will say that if, if you have the one that has the pro connect, you barely need to be outside at all because you literally could fill up your pellets and put your meat on and do it all from inside. I love that. I love that thing. Um, all right, let's see. Excuse me. Ugh. So George has a good point. I was thinking about the process of pressure cooking. Like does soft water come to pressure quicker than hard water? These are things I'm going to have to find out for you guys. But um, as far as taste goes, yeah, that's, that's different. I've never noticed any difference in taste, but you know, that could just be going from, I, I had a well in Maryland um, and it, but it went through a purifier, went through filters. I just never noticed any difference. So I haven't noticed. But yeah, the minerals and stuff, that's a good point. I've never really thought about that. Um, I'll do that, Joni, for the... I think my battery, I don't even have a back to it. So I've lost it. So that was what was wrong at first. Well, I took the battery out. Now it seems to be working. Okay. All right, guys. Well, listen, it's 8.30. Um, I've had a great time chatting with you. I'm very, very, very sorry about the interruptions with the dogs. And I'm sorry about having to yell at them. Um, and George, stop looking at the cat. I can see you. I now have eyes in the back of my head, George. You're in trouble. Yeah. So um, anyway, I apologize for all the interruptions and all that stuff, but it was still fun. I hope I answered your questions. And I can't wait to see you guys next Tuesday. And it'll be Tasty Tuesday where Jeff and I will be cooking.
All right. Have a great night, everybody. I'm going to go get the chili out of the Ninja Slow Cooker. Love you all.